Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel. Okay, I'm Clarice Lim. Today I'm going to share with you a P3 topic called the classification of materials. Okay, so what are the keywords? In I Love Learning Science, we teach children how to answer Section B questions using keywords, which is very important because a lot of students don't know how to answer the, sex, uh, the Section B questions because they don't know how to use the keywords or when to use and what to use. So basically, the keywords will be presented in every single one of our worksheets for the students. Over here, let me show you some of them. Uh, materials are the things we use to make objects with. So this is one thing that you need to understand. Uh, some materials come from nature, some are man-made. Knowing the physical properties of a material helps us choose the right material to make an object. So what are the keywords in this topic then? The keywords will be here. Strength. What is the meaning of strength? Is the ability to withstand heavy load. What is the meaning of flexibility? Ability to bend without breaking. Waterproof does not absorb water, so this is a keyword, transparency, ability to allow light to pass through, and the ability to float or sink in water, and breakability, which is the ability to withstand damage. So these are some of the keywords that you will need to put inside your answer whenever you are answering uh, questions in your exam paper that is under this topic, classification of materials for the P3s. Okay. So some of the example uh, sample materials that you will usually be asked will be like ceramic, brick, glass, metal, rubber, wood. And uh, children will need to know the differences and the main advantage of each of them and the examples of usage. For example, ceramic is hard, it is used for marks, bases and pots, fabric is flexible, it is used for cloths and curtains, and the glass is transparent, it is used for windows, uh, spectacle lenses, uh, metal is strong, good conductor of heat and electricity, is used for cooking pots wires and uh, plastic is waterproof you can also say plastic is light okay if you want to uh, it is used for bags tables and containers and uh, rubber is flexible is good for erasers slippers and tires and wood floats on water and uh, it is good for boats and furniture okay given these keywords let's take a look at some of the questions that you will be commonly asked Let's look at section B questions over here. The diagram below shows a pair of spectacles. Part X is made of glass. Okay, so in this question, they already told you it's made of glass. So suggest another material suitable for making part X. The only other material that is see-through. Or rather, what do you mean by see-through? When we talk about see-through in science, you need to understand see-through means that light is allowed to pass through. Okay, light is allowed to pass through. That means it has transparency in the material. What is the other material that allows light to pass through besides glass? The other one that you need to know will be plastic. Okay, so if you want to be very accurate, if you have the common on that, you can actually say the correct answer is acrylic. Okay, acrylic is the kind of plastic that allows light to pass through. Right, so one other material that you can use to make glass uh, to, in replacement of glasses will be acrylic of course but it scratches easily eh? so it is not usually commonly used unless it's for children because they don't want them to break right the moment it drops glasses drops on the floor and it breaks easily so what is an important characteristic of the material suggested in a over here this one acrylic that makes it a better choice than glass for making part x so as i mentioned just now because it is able to withstand Damage. Breakability, you do not need to write that because it's not exactly a key science word that you need to know. If you know how to write it in simple English, ability to withstand damage, it, it does not break easily, anything along that line, you will be able to get the answer correct. Okay, therefore, you can put the answer as this. Plastic does not break easily when it is dropped. Okay, so this one will be the correct answer. Right, so this is the keyword. Let's look at the next question. Gerald used the light sensor to measure the amount of light passing through. So you see, amount of light passing through over here. So he has four different materials. Material A, B, and C, D. Okay. So amount of light is a measure in lux. Okay. A lot of children always ask me, what is lux, Mrs. Sui? So lux basically is a measurement for light. Okay. For the amount of light passing through, A is 230. is very high. That means it's most likely highly transparent but for b is zero zero means zero light passes through material b which means it is most likely not transparent at all it is completely opaque 
right and then a little less for C and then a little more for D so if you were to arrange the most transparent to the least transparent I think you already got the answer right okay so the most transparent will definitely be A correct so A followed by D followed by C followed by B B is the least transparent over here so which material is likely to be wood? Wood, think about it, wood comes from trees. Can you see through trees? Of course you cannot see through trees. So which material will it most likely be? Of course it's B, correct? So B, so give a reason for your answer. So how do you answer it in the most uh, obvious science manner? Or rather in the ch children's answering method, they will usually say, oh, okay, so B is the answer. Give a reason, uh, we cannot look through, we cannot see through wood. Perhaps they will write it like that. So it makes sense, right? We cannot see through wood, right? But remember, that's not a scientific concept that is being tested over here. The teacher will always want you to write what you have learned, okay? So how do you know that B is the answer? Because wood does not allow light to pass through. If you know the word opaque, of course you can use the word opaque as well. That is a scientific concept that you do learn in school, okay? But opaqueness, uh, light, is usually learned in P4. So this is only P3, you do not need this answer then. So if you want to, you can simply write, wood does not allow light to pass through. That is the scientific way of answering this question. Not because you cannot see through wood, okay? Remember that, science concept, science keywords, very, very important. Let's look at the next question. Richard conducted an experiment to test the strength of four different materials, A, B, C, and D. He dropped weights from the same height onto each material. Okay, so these are the weights. There's four different materials, A, B, C, and D. Okay, as he drops them, some of them break, some of them didn't break. Right, the minimum amount number of weights required to break each material was recorded in the graph below. Okay, C breaks very easily. You see, the number of weights dropped on the material before it broke. Right, you just drop two weights and C broke. That's what it means. You drop 10 before B actually breaks. So 10 you actually has very strong material. Okay, it is actually a very strong material B. So C is a very weak material. High breakability C, low breakability B. Okay, so which of the materials is the weakest? Already mentioned it is C. Which of the materials A? Uh, which of the materials is most suitable for making a door? Do you want a door to break easily? No, obviously not, right? So you want B. So how would you explain then? If you write down B, um, it does not break easily. Yes, you can get that correct. Okay, because breakability is ability to withstand damage. So therefore, you can write the answer as material B. It is the strongest material. You can also say it is the material. It is the material that could withstand the most weight before being damaged okay so you can write this as an answer also why because we want to be as exact as possible as close as possible to the keywords to the scientific concept that we have learned so it's either this one okay strongest material in the, in the experiment as you can hold the most oh one word missing weight okay or you can also write it this way that it is the material that could withstand the most weight before being damaged this is accepted right so this two can be the answer either one of them let's look at the last one june conducted an experiment to find out if the material of an object will affect whether it sinks or floats in water so she dropped four objects a b c d made of different materials into the tank below is the experiment a fair test very very common question is this a fair test so remember Fair test, very common question, you only need to remember one thing. All factors in an experiment must be the same except for one, one variable, because that will make it a very fair test, because one variable means you are testing that one thing, okay? Everything else is the same, that one thing you are testing, but in this experiment, apart from having different materials, you also have different shapes and sizes, which makes it no longer a fair test. Therefore, that's the answer. So, remember that, what is the, what is the factor to make get a fair test or the all the variables in the test must be the same in this case it is not because the shapes and sizes are different 
okay so the answer is no they are not of the size fishermen release a sea anchor into the sea to stop their boats from moving so the anchor drops to the bottom of the seabed and allows fishermen okay let's look at the next question fishermen release a sea anchor into the sea to stop their boats from moving so the anchor drops to the bottom of the seabed and allows fishermen to fish at the same spot without the boat moving so that's what the sea anchor is for right it is a very heavy stuff you drop it all the way down so that it drags along the seabed to a stability point so that the boat doesn't move around anymore okay as much as without the anchor so Based on June's experiment above, which material A, B, C, or D is the most suitable for making a sea anchor? The A, B, C, or D is referring to this one. Obviously, in order for an anchor to work, it needs to be at the seabed, which means you will want material B to be used as a sea anchor, correct? Okay, so therefore B is used, but why? How do you explain why? Okay, so why the ability to float sink in water? You see that is the science keyword. Therefore, you answer material B so that it is able to sink to the bottom of the seabed to hold the boat in position. That will be your answer. Okay, one last question I want to go through with you. It will be a flow chart. Okay, why flow chart? Flow charts are very, very important. Uh, in fact, in P3, it might be something new to P3, okay? So because it's something new, a lot of students actually don't know how to answer questions re pertaining to uh, uh, flowchart. Okay, let me show you in a bigger screen over here. Oops. Adrian, please delete this part. Okay, so this is the flowchart that I want to show you. How do you read this flowchart? Follow the arrows always from the top. Okay, if it's from the sideway, if it's from a sideway, so you read it from the left to the right. If not, it's from the top to the bottom. Okay, in this way, you can read it from the start over here. Object. So this object, is it waterproof? No, it is not. If it's not waterproof, is it flexible? No, it is not. So T. What does it say? Which means T is not waterproof and it is not flexible. That's what T is. Then what about Q over here? So Q, right from the top again, Q is waterproof because it says yes over here. So Q falls under the yes part. And is it transparent? No. So Q is not transparent. Do you see the pattern here? Okay, let's try S. Huh? So what is S? Let's go backwards over here. So is it waterproof? Is S waterproof? No, it is not. Is it flexible? Yes, it is. Does it float on water? No. So that's the properties of S. Okay, so you do the same thing for R. Would you be able to tell me what are the properties of R? Okay, you try it out. You may pause the video here if you are trying. So R, let's go back all the way here. R, is it waterproof? No, it is not waterproof. Is it flexible? Yes, it is flexible. Does it float on water? Yes. So R is something that is not waterproof, yet flexible, yet floats on water. Right? Okay, let's try this one. So, P, you may stop the video here, try on your own. So, what is the property of P? Is it waterproof? Yes, it is. Is it transparent? Yes, it is. Okay. So, based on the flowchart above, state two similarities between R and S. So, the children will be panicking over here. What is R? What is S? Uh, I don't even know what is R or is S. You don't need to know. All you need to do is based on the flowchart above. That is the keyword of the question. Based on the flowchart above, don't panic. Just write down whatever you know. They told you R, okay, the similarities of R. R and S is over here, right? So what are the similarities? Number one, it is not waterproof over here, correct? And it is flexible over here. So the two common similarities between these two is that they are not waterproof and they are both flexible, R and S, okay? So that's how you answer this kind of question. Okay, now let's look at part B of the question. Based on the flowchart above, state the difference between P and T. Okay, now let's come back to the flowchart again. Based on the flowchart, note that, that the question is saying based on the flowchart. So you don't need to know what is P, what is T, okay? Don't panic if you don't know what is P and what is T. So P and T, what is the difference? The difference is that right from the start, they already said 
is zip waterproof no leads to T and yes leads to P so what is the difference between these two material they are not waterproof right [oh] sorry (um) so what is that P is waterproof and T is not based on the flow chart above you see based on the flow chart above again [ah] which letter P Q R S or T represents each of the following objects bath towel so you take a think think about it bath towel do you need it to be waterproof of course not you want it to absorb as much water as possible right so is it waterproof no it should not be is it flexible yes you will want it to be flexible correct so goes down here does it float on water do you need a bath towel to float on water of course not therefore the answer is S bath towel is S what about rubber tyre okay now let's come back to the flow chart again rubber tyre okay do you need it be wat~ to be waterproof of course you want it to be waterproof do you need it to be transparent no you do not therefore the answer will be Q okay I hope you learnt something today that the keywords are important in every single science question alright I'm clarice #lim# hope to see you again subscribe to our youtube channel bye bye